Okay, so now I want to give you a run through some of the breathing circuits that we use. Um, this first one here we would use maybe up until about 25-30 kilos and this is called a Jackson Reese modification of an Irish tea piece. Um, what you've got, uh, you connect this end up to your fresh gas supply and oxygen then flows along down this tube and then is delivered to the patient through the face mask. And provided you've got the flow rate set high enough to meet the patient's demands, all the fresh gas, all everything that the patient breathes in comes from this fresh gas flow from here. If you haven't got this high enough to meet the patient's demands, they will then also take gas from this tubing here, which is open to the environment. So it's important you have it set high enough that the patient that this meets the patient's demands so they're getting all the inspired gas from the oxygen supply. Um, after the patient's taken the breath, they'll expire it out, and it comes out through here. Um, at the end of expiration, the patient should have a, a pause in their breathing, but your oxygen supply continues to flow through here, and then it flushes the expired gas out through the hole at the end of the bag. So what's important is that you have the flow of gas set high enough, one, that it meets the patient's demand when they take a breath in so that they don't entrain expired gas from here, and two, that it's high enough that when the patient expires, it flushes the expired gas out through the bag before the patient's ready to take another breath in. And particularly if you're providing positive pressure ventilation, you're going to be giving the gas collected in this reservoir bag back into the patient when you ventilate them. So you need the flow rate high enough that this has all been washed, all the expired gas has been washed out through the end of the bag. So in general, we would use four litres as a minimum, um, and you want to have at least two to three times the patient's um, minute volume. So I'm gonna turn this on, I'm gonna put it up to about five, six litres. And if I put this mask onto the patient, they can breathe quite comfortably through this without me ventilating them or without me delivering any peep. And what I'll notice is as they breathe, this bag will go up and down with respiration. So I can use this as a marker of how, how they're actually breathing. Um, what I can do is I can deliver just PEEP or positive pressure ventilation. So if I just squeeze off the bottom of this, I'm just delivering just PEEP to the patient now. You'll notice my bag stays up in inflation. It doesn't collapse. And I'm then transmitting the PEEP to the patient. The bag will then go up and down in my hand as the patient breathes. The other thing I can do is if I squeeze the bag, I can then deliver positive pressure ventilation to the patient. So how am I doing that? Um, I'm just gonna put a little bit more flow. What you'll notice is I'm occluding the back of the bag with these two fingers. Um, because this is a small patient, I'm holding the bag quite far up because I don't actually need an awful lot of tidal volume. And then with the this is these fingers at the back are controlling my peep. If I relax them, my bag collapses more. If I squeeze them down, the bag tightens up. So this is how I'm controlling how much peep I'm giving to the patient. And then how much ventilation I give depends on how hard I squeeze the bag. If I was to have the bag all the way up like this and squeeze it, I'm obviously given much bigger tidal volumes and actually excessive tidal volumes for a patient of this size. So I can do one of two things. I can either just squeeze the bag a little bit, or I can hold it slightly further up and have a smaller bag and squeeze it more. So all the time I'm looking at my patient, looking for chest lift, and gauging how hard I squeeze the bag, depending on that. So like I said, I can just use this as a device to give oxygen to the patient. I can just occlude the end and let the patient spontaneously ventilate and just give them PEEP. Or I can give positive pressure ventilation with PEEP. Okay, so the final circuit I want to look at is the Mapleson C circuit. So this is a circuit we use on patients more than about 25 to 30 kilos when the RST piece is too small. So I've got a two litre bag, which is suitable for an adult. You can get smaller bags that go on to here. Um, this is quite an ineffective circuit. There's a lot of rebreathing in it, so you need the flow rate quite high to prevent this. So generally, with this type of circuit, you want at least 15 litres of oxygen going through it. How do you use it? 
Well, you just put it onto your patient, like you would with the with the Jackson Reese modification of the RST piece. There's no hole in the end of this bag. Um, your hole in the circuit is over here. I'll turn it up this way so you can see it. That's the hole. And you've got a, an adjustable pressure limiting valve on the top here. So at the moment, if I turn it this way, anti-clockwise, the valve is fully open. Uh, so if I squeeze the bag, you hear that noise. That's most of the air blowing off out through this valve here. So you probably notice, uh, although I'm moving this baby's chest, um, if this was a bigger patient, I probably wouldn't have enough pressure to move the chest. So what I need to do is adjust the valve here, move this round somewhere into the middle, so that when I squeeze the bag, most of the air is going to the patient, and when I squeeze it excessively, it will blow off through here. Obviously I wouldn't be using this circuit on a patient this small, but it's just for this demonstration. And I've got this baby. If I close the valve all the way around, turn it clockwise, what you'll notice is my bag is staying too full. When I squeeze it, there's actually too much pressure and I can't effectively ventilate like this. The peep's also going to be excessively high and that may have adverse effects for your patient. So you don't want your bag like this. Somewhere in the middle is about right. All the time I'm looking at my patient, checking that I'm moving the chest just as much as I want and not squeezing the bag excessively.